and welcome to Coffee and Geography, where my guests and I geek out about the world and everything on it, discovering that we are all geographers in some way, shape or form. I am your host, Kit, and my pronouns are they, them or she, her. So settle down with a brew, hit that subscribe or follow button and enjoy the listen. Hi everybody and welcome back to Coffee and Geography. Um, I have been, and I've said this quite a few times with many guests and I about like I've been trying to get this person on the podcast for a while, but like really this is person I followed for a, a while and I have such admiration for this wonderful human being and she's finally here. Jasmine oh. Kreshi, how are you? I am good, thank you. And I feel like when you say you've been trying to get me for a while, it's mainly because I'm really hard to pin down <laughs> and I'm really oh. hard to get like in terms of timings because people are I don't know people are always like um oh you do so many things how do you do it and I'm like (laughs) I am completely chaotic I have the ability to plan of like a pair of scissors I just can't (laughs) I just can't do any like planning so it's just like that's why it's taken so long to get me on but I'm so honored that you that you've been following me and I've seen your work and I've just enjoyed it as somewhat obviously as like trans women I don't think we get to see a lot of this kind of mm. like work that is like mutually from trans women. It's usually like, oh, I admire you because you're a trans woman, but I'm not, you know? And it's like to have yeah. a trans woman like admire you and then for you to admire them back is a really amazing thing, I think. So like, yeah, I'm oh. super honored to be here too. So thank you for inviting me. Oh, no, I'm getting, I'm already getting emotional. We've only just started. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, but when you said about like being chaotic in your organization, I, I was thinking then, I feel so seen. <laughs> it's like people, people have the exact same thing with me. It's like, Kit, how do you do all this stuff? I'm like, I don't. I'm just chaos. It, it, and mostly it is probably because of ADHD. It's mostly a case yeah. of procrastinate, 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 procrastinate. Get 500 things done in an hour, you know? And it's like, it's that, definitely ADHD. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's, it's, we can use it as a power. And I do. I try and use it as a superpower. Mm-hmm. Um, so, introduce you and your your bio is fantastic so uh let's read this out so jasmine is a little punk storytelling powerhouse of tran- trans brown muslim non-binary activist know it all monster energy oh <laughs> that is so great um she loves bumblebees and beetles writes about queerness marine mammal intelligence and love sometimes they dance usually when they've seen a butterfly that's a good excuse but <laughs> for other reasons too <laughs> jasmine has chatted to drag queens about clownfish presented CBBs on Starfish, and now, and this is definitely something very exciting, writing a book. Mm. So, uh, uh, yeah, we'll g- give you the chance to talk a bit about that, uh, Jasmine, because um, it sounds like something that will be very welcome on a geographer's shelf. So. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, yeah, that, to be honest, when when you said, oh, you can write anything you want for the bio, for the bio I immediately went to like my little folder that's got the list of all like the different <laughs> length of bios that I send people. And yes. I, was like, I was like, wait a minute, but I just told you what my jobs are. So why would I repeat that in the bio? So this is the first time I've ever written that kind of bio for this because you were like, do something quirky. And I was like, do you know what? I'll put something in that like no one can really tell what it is, but it's quite it's quite queer in the way that yeah. I mean it is. So I just, I enjoy, um, yeah. And that is like a, an ode to my ADHD is the fact that there's so much random stuff on there. <laughs> an ode to ADHD. Oh, I'm going to have to use that. <laughs> that's like, a biography title. An ode to ADHD. Yeah, it certainly is. Or the cover of your cover of when you get round to it, Jasmine, maybe a cover of your autobiography. An oh, ode God. to ADHD. <laughs> an ode to ADHD. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it's like, again, for the second time now in just the space of four minutes, so I feel seen because when you said about like your bios and like the amount of time like for project work, and for contributing to articles and stuff like that, I say, oh, Kit, can you send me your bio? And I do. I've like, I'm like, I get that stage where I kind of, I go back into my emails where I've sent bios in. I'm like, every time I see my old bios, I'm like, meh. <laughs> I'm sure I can do better than this. Yeah. It's it's weird though, because it's like, when they ask for a bio, it's like, do do I put down all the jobs that I have done? And then it just sounds like I'm listing off stuff. Or do I put my personality into it? And I've never, like, the only times I've ever put personality into bios is when I'm 
recently I've signed up to like well signed up I've been asked to do like poetry readings and stuff and they're like oh send us a bio and before I used to send it and it used to be so stratified and like systematic and I'd be like oh I've read these other people and they're all like magical and musical and I'm just like oh you know I do this this and this and it's like no I need to change it so that's the only things I've been doing like really like quirky ones for so this one's like the quirkiest one yet and I'm yes. like willing to change some of my other bios now as per this one I love it it's completely within the right tone of <laughs> a this podcast and be the quirky host because I am a lot of people who know me know I am pretty quirky <laughs> so, <laughs> all right so just Jasmine uh, cof- in the coffee um, vein of coffee and joffy do you have um, a specific brew with you or are you on just um, something a little bit more sensible like water I mean I've got I've got my cup of tea with oat milk what about yourself I mean I would love uh, a mocha with uh, soya milk and yeah just that would be my dream drink at the moment I am on water though as as trans peasantry would have it okay <laughs> yeah so we we can picture ourselves in in the in the coffee house though with uh with your mocha and my um my fancy tea with oat milk so i'm glad someone else who goes for the non-dairy option as well <laughs> and I, once i went to oat milk i was like, like wow actually this is really good i'm not going to go back at all and uh i can't i can't i can't stand the taste of cow's milk anymore i, I really yeah, can't i can't either and i think again it like comes from being vegan and going into that like i'll still eat um like products that aren't vegan because i think the whole point of veganism is that it's more of a perspective and it's not a diet because i don't like Mm. diets and i think your if your ideology is that you want to save and not waste then throwing away something that's not vegan doesn't make sense so to me it's more like you know you do what you can and a little is better than none anyway so anyone who is vegan and eats meat or meat or any product or uses any product that isn't vegan that's that's fine you're what you're doing is basically just using things that are already in front of you as long as you're not you know as long as you're not producing a demand for it I think that's yeah fine. so I, I yeah but I hate dairy milk I cannot go back to that <laughs> I know it's, it's it's really interesting to say because when people say to me like I pick up so usually when I'm like at a, a buffet and it's the end of the buffet right um and then I pick up one of the remaining sausage rolls and like kit what you're doing i thought you were a vegan or vegetarian i'm like well i've asked if anyone else is going to eat that i've asked the people who have supplied the food said what's going to happen to it and they go oh it's probably just going to go in the bin it's like no it's not yeah no that's going into my digestive system and being turned into energy thank you <laughs> you know that's that so i'm i think framing it as as a perspective rather than as a diet is probably the best way because i i people say what kind of diet or do you eat and i'm like I don't really say ve- I say well I kind of like we default to vegan but we do eat you know we do eat some products some animal products and then every now and then we eat meat but usually it's only kind of like not to waste things and low carbon and things mm-hmm. like that and I like like there is no word for it so to actually framing it all as just a perspective is is a, I'm like carbontarian is that even a thing <laughs> now did I just coin a new word I don't know I think, but that is like that. That's exactly what you need to do: is frame it as a perspective, because it's it's almost like, um, like like you said, if it's being wasted, then it's almost disrespectful. I think to the animal that has been mm, yeah. killed for this, that you're now going to throw it away. Like all that energy went into making that animal, and then you, you know, all that carbon and all that pollution and all that emission went into factory farming, and at the end of that it's just going to get thrown away. Like you yeah. might as well eat it. Come on. Like it, even if you're, you know, you don't, what you're not doing is creating a demand for it, I think. So I think yeah. it's very interesting that people, and also there's this whole thing about um, the whitewashing of vegan diets, you know, yes. and the, the yeah. Eurocentricity that's at the center of most modern vegan diets, because really what, what we're searching for is a sustainable option. And it, that can come from insect foundation diets yep. and insect based diets which you know i've seen they've recently started stocking in like Lidl and stuff so it's like yeah. it's it's interesting to like delve into different things and what people think about because i feel like i talk to a lot of vegans and they're like oh we eat it because we can't stand the fact that the animals that have feelings you know and i'm like well but plants are living too that's not really why we're doing this we're not doing it because it has a feeling because if you think about it a lot of the world that we use and the resources that we use 
Mm. We're an ecosystem. It does rely upon the give and take of organisms that may not necessarily know how each other feels. And so it's more based upon a sustainable environment that can be created for all. Yeah. A a few things that you said that I really pick up on. I mean, like, um, as soon as you said about the whitewashing, um, like, and I thought, well, yeah, you know, talk about um, indigenous practices, you Mm -hmm. know, about about being part of the ecosystem, being part, you know, the natural part of how the, the, the food web and things like that and, and how they would, you know, eat meat and whale and things like that as part of the ecosystem in a sustainable way, you know, that's one thing. So I think it is very much disrespecting, say, indigenous practices in that respect. Yeah. And then you said about the insects. Well, last week's episode, it was an on-location recording because I was doing a... Um, uh, a yearly thing that I do because I used to be part of a, a network where we have teachers from the Norwich area and teachers in Malawi and Dedza in Malawi mm. and we have this yearly conference about you know where, where we gather together and we t- learn about Malawian culture and things like that 